So now we've got neck only in series. That's a memory card, that's not a pick. Please tell me I did not forget to make a pick. All right, let's go ahead and start with all parallel chords. Thank you. 
So let's go ahead and talk about the electronics on this thing. As I mentioned in my last video, we have three push-pull pots. So we have series and parallel for the neck, series and parallel for the bridge, and then both pickups together in series or parallel. So tons of awesome unique tone combinations as you have already witnessed. And not to mention, of course, you do have three independent volumes. So you can blend series, parallel, parallel series, whatever, all together. So the tone combinations really technically are infinite, right? Um, then we have this double pull, double throw switch right here. What that does is this pure tone jack that I installed is actually not a typical mono jack. It's actually a stereo jack. So when you kick it down, if you're using a TRS cable that splits out into two different quarter inches, what it does is it redirects the bridge pickup to go to the ring output. So you can actually record both of your pickups together in tandem, independent of each other. So that way you can go back in post-production and choose if you just want the neck or the bridge or blend between the two or put effects on one and EQ on the other, compress one, delay the other, whatever. Um, there have been so many times where I've recorded a part and I've spent so much time trying to nail it. And then I've gone back and been like, man, I really wish I had more of the bridge pickup in that blend. Um, it would have gotten the tone just a little bit better. So that's awesome that in post-production you can go back, select which pickup you want because you've recorded them on independent tracks. Or if you're one of those people that gigs with two monster stacks, you can run your neck through your Ampeg and your bridge through your Mesa Boogie and you just have just tone for days, right? And it's starting to rain, so I need to hurry up. But last thing, we have this switch right here, which is a momentary switch, very similar to a kill switch, but it's not actually a kill switch. This is raining too much. I need to pack up my gear, darn it. Basically, it's not a kill switch, it's a life switch, which means that it plays when you push the button instead of killing it when you push the button. And it's really cool if you throw on some effects, which I recorded earlier, so check this out. Honestly, that feature I thought was gonna be a lot cooler than it actually is. It's not super practical. It is fun. And honestly, I just wanted to try it for me just to see how it worked on bass. And I think it's cool. I think it has its merits. I'm not sure if it's like a studio quality feature. Um, I'm sure you can come up with something much better than that in post-production, but uh, super fun to have. And it's there if you want it and doesn't look out of place up here. So I think it's a cool little feature. So real quick, just a couple of things that I wanted to add before I was so rudely interrupted by the rain earlier. Um, a lot of you guys had voiced your concerns about neck dive with this thing because I added the extra material onto the back of the neck. You guys thought that the neck might be a little too heavy and that it would dive. As you can see, it doesn't. It actually balances just fine. You gotta remember, yes, I added a little bit of material right there, but I also took out a lot of material, okay? I've got these four inch and a quarter holes that I milled in there, as well as the extra scallops for the strings to be able to recess into the headstock. So. Um, the neck honestly does not weigh really any more than a typical bass neck. Now, if you guys really love this bass as much as I do, then I would really appreciate your help in this great guitar build off. There are three ways that you can vote for my bass. The first is to follow at great guitar build off on Instagram and like this post over here. I'll go ahead and link it in the description. Just hit the like button. That's a vote for my base. Another way is you can go to the Great Guitar Build Off website and vote for my base by donating to my charity, Life Water International, a ministry that's dedicated to bringing clean water projects and the love of Jesus to communities around the world. Super awesome ministry. Definitely worth supporting, so check that out. And lastly, if you wanna own this, you can bid on my eBay auction. Again, there's links down in the description to all this stuff. Um, unfortunately, it's already out of my reach, okay? I was gonna bid on my own bass because I love it and I wanted to keep it, but within an hour, I already couldn't afford my own instrument. So if you can't afford this bass, I totally understand I'm in the same boat. So I'm gonna just go ahead and give my money to Life Water. And lastly, lastly, I think, firstly, we need to thank Crimson Custom Guitars for putting on this competition because it has spurred a huge amount of positivity among the guitar building community here on YouTube. And if you haven't seen it yet, you definitely need to check out the unofficial entries, okay? The official entries turned out really cool, but I actually am more excited about these unofficial entries because these ideas are so 
creative and they turned out so cool. I think most of them honestly blow away the official entries. So if you haven't already checked out some of these unofficial entries, I'm gonna link a few of my favorites down in the description because I really think you guys need to check these out. And I'm really excited for next year's competition because I think it's gonna have a whole lot of better builders than me in it. So definitely check those entries out. And again, thank you to Crimson Custom Guitars for putting this on. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and I'll see you in that next video.